Yes, yes, I'm still waiting. Have you found Darby? Oh, come on, what do you mean she's not there? I know she's there. No, I'm not gonna leave any message. I want to talk to Darby, now. Hello? Hello? Damn. I've uh, been looking all over for you. She won't talk to me. Yeah, well, of course she won't. Uh, come on, let's go. No, Trapper, I'm not gonna talk to any attorney until I, I've talked to Darby. I want to know what this is all about. Okay, uh, you're facing some charges that just might turn your medical career into garbage. That's what it's well, all about. Well, then there's about. not some kind of a mistake or a misunderstanding. It's not like Darby to pull a stunt like this. Well, now, her name was on that subpoena, pal, and so was yours. Look, I'm not going to try to give you any advice because you wouldn't listen to it. However, at this moment, I would suggest that you proceed slowly, discreetly, and cautiously, at least until the attorneys have had their say, okay? I don't think I'm going to like what they tell us. Well, of course you won't. I won't either, but uh, they're expecting us, and it would be impolite to keep them waiting, especially when they charge by the hour, so let's go. They're more expensive than we are. I think we should settle the case out of court before the press gets hold of it, and I'm sure that's all she wants. Darby doesn't need the money, Arnold. Before we do anything, I think I should have a talk with her. You stay away from her. You should know by now that women have a talent for complicating everything. They're Good all... afternoon, gentlemen. I'm Roz Tremont. I'm new to this law firm. I presume you're Dr. Gates? Yeah, McIntyre. This is Mr. Slocum. And the young man with the two-dollar haircut is Dr. Gates. It was your barber, Trapper. I see. Dr. Gates? Will you gentlemen be seated? Uh. As you know, my associates usually handle your hospital's legal affairs, but given the nature of this case, we thought it might be more effective if you were represented by a woman. I trust you don't mind the switch. Oh, no, not at all. Women make pretty good lawyers. As a matter of fact, I know of one myself. <laughs> well, now you know, too. <laughs> yes. I studied the file on this little mess, and in my opinion, Ms. Sheldon does not have a very strong case. I think we are dealing with an extremely vindictive young lady. Well, never mind the motives. Just get it over with quickly as you can. We don't want a scandal. As I understand it, Miss Sheldon was rejected by the defendant. It's not always easy to settle with a woman scorned. I still can't believe that Darby would do this. Well, it's been done, pal. And threat of scandal is her strongest weapon. You could win the case, but you could end up without a career. Yes, we've got to handle this very cautiously, Gates. Might be wise if you'd remain off duty until this whole thing blows over. Not a chance, Arnold. What do you think, Miss Tremont? Oh, I can't tell you gentlemen how to run your hospital. Why don't you just um, let your disciplinary committee review the matter? They can decide what's best for all concerned. Good idea. Trapper, you're on that committee. Uh, could you arrange for a hearing? Don't I have anything to say about this? The less you have to say, the better. You and your hormones have got us into too much trouble already. Well, thanks a lot, Arnold. It's nice to know I have your support. What do they mean our centerfolds are raunchy enough? I mean, I give them erotic art and they want anatomy manuals. If I take a letter to the promotion department. Dear Ed. Hi, Darby. Hi. How are you feeling? Fine, thanks. Honey, don't you think you should be getting your rest? Do you have a minute, TK? Ah, uh, yeah, we'll do the letters this evening. Uh, you excuse this moment, Holly? D Darby and I want to talk. Now? Split. Sit down. You're still angry with me, aren't you? You said you were going to withdraw the lawsuit. You still haven't done it. Well, that's a... Uh... In a very complicated process. Uh, Not that complicated. And you signed the complaint yourself, you know. Because you insisted on it. Nevertheless. Look, I was angry and hurt and just a few days out of surgery, and I wasn't thinking straight. Well, you had every right to be angry and hurt. I mean, the man insinuated himself into your life, he exploited your medical condition. He took advantage of you as a patient and as a woman. And when you fell in love with him, he threw you away like yesterday's garbage. Expect me to just stand by and not do anything? The lawsuit is so cruel and pointless. It's not as cruel as seeing you hurt. As far as I'm concerned, anybody that hurts my daughter is going to be destroyed. 
to make sure that she doesn't get hurt again. Thanks to be hurling thunderbolts from Olympus. Yes, if necessary, I will. Darby, honey, I mean, you're the most important thing in my life. Don't you realize that? Of course I do, TK. And maybe I have been overprotective. Maybe I, I have overdone it, but... I mean, you gotta remember, Darby, that you always needed a very special kind of attention all of your life. You may resent me for overdoing it, but I'll still go on caring as much as ever. That's a burden we're both going to have to bear. And tell Dottie Pitt to take those antimacassars out of the operating room. By whom? You. Here, I want you to drink this. Uh, come on now, you know how I feel about carrot juice. When I work for a doctor, he's a healthy doctor. Come along, bottoms up. Work? Ernie, you're taking the job? Not yet. Okay, okay. <clears throat> If you'll meet my terms. You will be the highest paid scrub nurse on this planet. Plus all the fringes. Pension, profit sharing, medical and dental insurance. That's not important to me, Trapper, you know that. I'm talking about my terms. I won't work for a man who doesn't respect his own body. I adore my body. Good, then I'll expect you to eat sensibly, drink at least three glasses of fresh vegetable juice every day. One. Three. Two. All right, too. And 30 minutes of calisthenics and weightlifting every morning. Come on, Ernie, I don't need all that stuff. I jog every day. I play racquetball. That's heart and lungs. I'm talking about muscle tone. Firm that up. Okay, 15 minutes a day. I came down on the vegetable juice. You can come up on the fitness. Make it 20 minutes. You got a deal. And you got a scrub nurse. Oh, Ernie, I love you. <laughs> come on. I'll show you around. Oh, good. I want you to meet my new scrub nurse, Ernestine Chu. Uh, we've already met. <laughs> so I see. <laughs> Ernie and Starch and I go back all the way to Korea. We're in the same unit together. I've got to talk to you, Doctor. You're busy, Trapper. I'll just browse around and get acquainted. Okay, I'll find you later. Yes. Well, um, what can I do for you, Mrs. Kaufman? I understand Dr. Gates is back. Yes, as a matter of fact, I consulted him about your daughter's case this morning. Is he in some kind of trouble? A lawsuit? Something like that? Whatever gave you that idea? Some candy strappers were talking about it in the elevator. Seems like a patient is filing a, uh, a well, let's just say, uh, an unsavory charge against him. Is that true? Well, now, you can't believe everything you hear on elevators. You haven't answered my question. I don't think it deserves an answer. <laughs> oh, you doctors, the way you protect each other. You see, I'm very familiar with that kind of warped personality. I was married to a man like that. Couldn't keep his hands off me. That's why I couldn't stand to have him touch me. Now, if Dr. Gates is one of those, I don't want to have him near my daughter. Glad you're back. Thanks so much. I'm glad they kept waiting for me to get stronger. Now you can do my surgery. That's why I'm here. 
I've gone over everything with Dr. Titus and Dr. McIntyre. We've scheduled your operation for Friday morning. Is that okay with you? Am I going to be all right this time? Well, that's the whole plan, Ellie. To send you out of here a healthy young lady. Now, sit up a minute. I want to listen to your heart. Now, this isn't going to hurt. What are you doing to her? Ellie, baby, what's he doing to you? Nothing, Mommy. Nothing. It doesn't look like nothing to me. Uh, Mrs. Kaufman, look, I think... if you ever touch my daughter again, if you ever come into this room again, so help me, I'll have the police... Mom, stop it! It's all right. With you. It's all right, Mrs. Kaufman. I'll take care of you're this. You're upsetting Ellie. Look, I'm upsetting Ellie. I'm upsetting her. What do you think you're doing? Now, you get out of here. Mom! Mom! And don't come near my daughter again. Mom, don't say things like that. Uh, it's all right, Ellie. We'll settle this. Don't, don't... Get out! Did you hear me? I said get out! And I understand. Look, sweetie, you don't have to protect him. It's all right. Now, he's not going to bother you anymore. The woman is a flake, Trapper. She's a neurotic, irrational nut. I know. After she left you, she nailed me. Demanded that I take you off the case. Well, they'd be pretty upset about that. It's important to her that I do the surgery. Well, I tried to explain that to her, but uh, she doesn't want to hear it. I can't fight her on this. I have to give her what she wants. Beautiful. And that's it? You're not going to do anything about it? What can I do? You're the one who makes the big decisions around here. When I'm talking about the lawsuit. Makes you look like Jack the Ripper, and now it's affecting the recovery of a 12-year-old girl. Now, I tried to call Darby and Sheldon, but I couldn't get through to them. Maybe you should try, huh? My hands are tied, Trapper. The lawyers are telling me to keep a low profile. Slocum tells me to stay away from Darby. And I'm telling me to stay cool, objective, and unemotional. And, of course, you've always done exactly what you've been told to do, haven't you, son? Well, I'm mighty proud of you, my boy. With your lack of initiative and desire to conform, you will go far in this world, huh? Oh, yes. Shoop, Ernestine Shoop. This is my way of getting acquainted. I start work here tomorrow. Great. Welcome to the rock pile. <laughs> Ernestine, this is Dottie Pitt. Hello. And this is Dr. Jackson. Jackpot. Hello. <laughs> and I'm Gloria Brancusi. Ripples. <laughs> Gloria. <laughs> uh, do I detect an accent? Yes, I'm from Jamaica. Oh, well, you are going to love it here. That is, if you're as lucky as I am. <laughs> it just makes me tingle all over. <laughs> Do you know where you're going to be working? Yes, for Dr. McIntyre. I'm his new scrub nurse. S scrub nurse? Trapper and I have known each other for... Uh, I... Did I say something wrong? No. Dottie's been filling in as Dr. McIntyre's temporary scrub nurse. And... She's kind of convinced herself that she's indispensable. Excuse me. Dottie, I'm really sorry. I had no idea. Oh, it's, um, uh, it's nothing. I, I understand. I'm sure Dr. John felt that we were growing much too close. That, that can uh, destroy one's efficiency, you know. Yeah, uh, yes, I'm sure that's it. You really think so? Absolutely. He warned me that the nurse I was replacing was a tough act to follow. I bet you spoiled him rotten. I certainly did try. <laughs> Well, I just hope I can maintain your standards. I hear Trapper is very demanding. Oh, yes. Oh, Dr. John insists on perfection. Uh-oh. I'm in big trouble. Oh, dear. I, uh... 
Oh, I don't want Dr. John disappointed. Would you like me to uh, give you some tips? You know his likes and his dislikes and his funny little eccentricities. Dottie, that's very sweet of you. If it isn't too much trouble. Oh, nonsense. Helping you is helping Dr. John. And that's all that matters. As long as you don't uh, take him away from me. <laughs> Are you kidding? I wouldn't stand a chance. <laughs> I'll show you around O.R. <laughs> oh, you're really gonna love it here. You really are. Dr. Gates, Darby Sheldon's my patient. Oh, hiya, Doc. Yeah, Miss Sheldon just drove out of here about two, three minutes ago. That's for the shortest way to the Palace of Fine Arts. Thanks. We have to talk. Our lawyers are being paid to do our talking for us, Gonzo. Let's not spoil it. That lawsuit is your father's idea, isn't it? Don't you think I've got a mind of my own? Well, your mind doesn't work that way. I warned you, I don't enjoy being rejected. But you do enjoy being controlled and manipulated by your father. Now, wait a minute. Let go. Not yet. Can't you see what's going on? You know what your father's world is like? You're the only thing of any real value in his life, and he's going to go to any extremes to keep you right there under his thumb. Well, maybe I like it there. Did you ever think of that? You could be living your own life your own way, Darby. All you have to do is cut the string. Gonzo, I was marked fragile from the day I was born. I've always needed special handling, and TK has always been there to protect me and care for me, and there's nobody in the world who would do as much. Darby, that's not true. Look. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the lawsuit. I'm sorry about everything. But you're going ahead with it. you out, Darby. You're constantly challenging your illness, roller skating, swimming, surfing, but you won't challenge your father. I told you oh, why. Oh, I don't believe that. I think you're afraid of him. No, I'm afraid of me. I mean, what would I do without TK? Where would I go? I've never worked, I've never worked a day in my life. I've got no skills, no talent. All I do really well is, <laughs> is bleed. And there isn't much demand for that. All right, Darby, it's time to go home. I didn't know there was a curfew, Sheldon. It applies to you too, Doctor. Just who the hell do you think? Gonzo, please, no. Just go on, please. Did you follow us here? I follow you everywhere. I thought you knew that. I'm beginning to hate you, TK. Okay, darling. You breathe a little easier now. Can you lift your head up, huh? signs every 15 minutes, okay? Is she any better? No. And you're not helping Mrs. Kaufman, feeding her all that stuff about Dr. Gates. Oh, well, I was just trying to explain to her why he's not her doctor anymore. Don't you realize what you're doing? That child idolizes Dr. Gates. She's ready to trust him with her life. Well, you can't hide the truth from her, Doctor. What truth? 
All you're doing is confusing her with a lot of vicious rumors. Well, I wonder if it's true. I mean, you may have a deviant roaming the halls, and you're not doing anything about it. Okay, we've scheduled a hearing for Thursday morning. Until then, Dr. Gates will keep on doing what he's paid to do. And until then, you tell him to stay away from my alley. All right, that's your privilege. But let me tell you something, Mrs. Kaufman. You're endangering your child's life with this ridiculous attitude. She's got enough problems without having to handle your neuroses. So for God's sakes, if you can't be kind to Dr. Gates, at least be kind to her. Hmm? The way I see it is the poor woman is repressed. Her hatred of men is actually a sublimated form of self-hatred. How's it going? Lousy. That bad, huh? Who's on that committee anyway? Well, there's Slocum and two members of the board. That's three big votes against Gonzo. And we got two doctors. What about the doctors? Well, one of them's Trapper John. Good, he's on our side. And the other is Dr. Olivia Fromkiss. Oh, no. What's wrong with Dr. Fromkiss? She's an excellent pediatrician. And she does exquisite needlepoint. Yes, but she's just come off a very messy divorce. Another man-hater. Another vote against Gonzo. Well, what do you expect? That ex-husband of hers was a, a monster. Stanley. Hmm? Isn't your father the chairman of the board? Your very first day here. How could you possibly know that? You told me. Isn't there some way he could arrange for Gonzo to have a fair hearing? Are you suggesting that our disciplinary committee will give him an unfair hearing? I'm saying that Gonzo needs a break, and maybe you could ask your father to help. Absolutely not. See, you have to understand, Ernie, uh, Dr. Riverside doesn't think very much of Dr. Gates. Oh, that's not true. Where did you get that idea? I like Gonzo. But not enough to help him. Well, that is your privilege. Hey, guys. Wait a minute, you guys. I'd like to help Gonzo. I always like to help those who are less fortunate than I, but uh, my father, you... Well, you don't know my father. It's not what I think or what you think. It's what the committee thinks. They have... Hi, doctor. <laughs> Morning, doctor. Morning. Where's Mrs. Wallenstein's shirt? Uh, she's gone, sir. Gone? Where? Her husband had her transferred last night to Bay General. What for? Oh. I thought you knew. Yeah, yes, I do. Where's Mrs. Huddleston? Stupid woman doesn't even have a mind of her own. Where'd she go? Home. She's not supposed to be discharged until Tuesday. That didn't stop her. She just packed up and left about an hour ago. Against medical advice? Against everybody's advice. Nobody could even reason with her. Why'd she leave? Because, uh, she insisted she's feeling better. That's all? She claimed her insurance had run out or something. She couldn't afford to stay here any longer. We checked her insurance when she came in. It was paying for everything. Well, I don't know. It was something like that. Okay, Gloria. Now the truth. Well, the truth is... Well, if you must know, she's a... narrow-minded, bigoted... fool. She heard the other women in the rec room talking, got all upset. Well, she's got plenty of company. I want you to know, Dr. Gates, and I hate what that Sheldon girl has done to you. It's really barbaric the way everybody's jumping to conclusions. They're all so eager to condemn an innocent man. It's the first time I've been called innocent in years. Thanks, Lord. Trevor, we've got to talk. Now, come here. Take a look at these. Ellie's new x-rays. I don't have to look. I'm off the case. 
Uh, only temporarily. Oh, boy. What's bugging you? Well, I've got a case of galloping paranoia. I've been taken off cases. My patients are transferring to other hospitals. Every time I walk in a room, people stop talking. I feel like I'm wearing a bell around my neck. So what'd you expect? A ticker tape parade? No, but I don't expect to be treated like a convicted felon. <laughs> oh, great. Well, I see it's time for me to trot out my lecture on the flaws and foibles of the human race. No, thanks. I know all about them. Then be a big boy and learn to accept them for what they are. Look, this time tomorrow, this whole thing will be over. You'll be cleared and it'll all be forgotten. You're a lot more confident about this than I am. Look, pal, as long as I'm on that committee, you'll get a fair shake. How? You're going to be surrounded by the four greatest minds of the Ice Age. <laughs> well, I've dealt with these dinosaurs before. By asking the right questions, I can Doctor, just... Doctor, you better take a look at this memo. Oh, boy. Where is he? Where's Slocum? He's gone to lunch. All right, call his office. Find out where he is. Where are you going? On a dinosaur hunt. <laughs> Trevor, I wish I would know you were coming this way. We could have had lunch One together. good reason, Arnie. That's all I want. Just one. Reason? For taking me off the disciplinary committee. Oh, that. Yes, well, we're dealing with a very explosive issue here, Trapper. I mean, you and Gates are close personal friends. Now, you couldn't be expected to treat the matter objectively. Well, yeah, who's replacing me? Danvers. Danvers? You expect that old goat to be objective? He's one of the original investors in T.K. Sheldon's magazine. Really? I wonder if he gets to meet any of those girls. He wouldn't know what to do with them. A resident hypochondriac treats himself for imaginary ailments and complains about his own bills. Well, it's out of my hands now. I'm putting in a formal request to be reinstated, and I'm taking it to the board of directors. That's where my orders come from. Look, it wasn't my idea. It came from the chairman of the board. Now, the only way you can be reinstated is if one of the committee members withdraws, and that's not very likely. favor, Trapper. Stop going thrum, thrum, thrum. Hi, gang. Great news. Dad just called. He took my advice and made some changes on the disciplinary committee. Isn't that neat? <laughs> He took Trapper off the committee. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Oh, John. John, I, I hope you're not blaming me for this. I mean, I really did do my best. I, I'd better call Dad. Uh, no, thanks, Dan. You've done enough. <sighs> Isn't there some way we can get you reappointed? Only if somebody quits. Well, who's your replacement? Myron Danvers. He's a reasonable man. Why don't we just all go to him en masse and, and confront him with this thing vis-a-vis -vis and let him know exactly how we feel, per se? I haven't been able to find him all day. He's lying down in the doctor's lounge. Is he ill? No, he's always dreaming up symptoms he hasn't got. You know, now that I think of it, he didn't look very well today. You don't even know him. I know a sick man when I see one. No, you don't understand. The man is a hopeless hypochondriac. Well, you see, that's the trap we all fall into. He's cried wolf so often nobody believes him anymore. Right. You know, for all we know, that poor guy may... Jackpot, I think we ought to go take a look. Hmm? Well, wait a minute, guys. I'll go with you. Stanley? Yes. Sit. But it was my idea. This is it, huh? Break a leg, my friend. They're praying for you. Thank you.
ready to introduce the members of our disciplinary committee. I am Arnold Slocum. Seated on my right are two members of our board of directors, Mr. Duraldo and Mr. Booker. On my left are two members of the uh, medical staff, Dr. Olivia Fromkus and uh, Dr. John McIntyre. Uh, <clears throat> what happened to Dr. Danvers? Oh, uh, Dr. Danvers hasn't been feeling well lately. Um, he admitted himself to this hospital last evening for a complete physical checkup. All right, let's uh, get on with it. Miss Sheldon, you've accused Dr. Gates of sexual misconduct. It's a very serious charge. Would you mind giving us a, a few details? Um, I really uh, don't know where to begin. Perhaps I could explain that. I'm sure your daughter can speak for herself, Mr. Sheldon. Sorry, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, Stanley, what's the rush? Uh, oh, uh, uh, Gonzo, the hearing, it, has it started yet? Yeah, a few minutes ago. Oh, darn, I want to wish him good luck. Oh, that's sweet of you, Stanley. I'm sure you'll understand. You think so? I don't know. Sometimes I think Gonzo doesn't understand me at all. Code blue, room 606. Code blue, room 606. Was hospitalization recommended? Yes. But the patient was taken home against medical advice. Darby and I felt she'd be more comfortable at home. And that's when Dr. Gates barged in again. He forced his way into the house, demanding to see Darby. Perhaps that's the new trend in medicine. The more beautiful the patient, the more aggressive the doctor. Her life was in danger, Mr. Sheldon. Clear, please. What's wrong? Ellie Kaufman, cardiac arrest. OK. I'll take over massage. I'm going to defibrillate by the time you'll be ready to tube her. Ready? Take it 200. Clear? Set it for 300. Clear? When I told Dr. Gates how I intended to live my life, he suggested that I arrange for full-time medical supervision. Um, my own personal physician. He's a very clever operator. He never suggested himself for the job. He just planted the idea in our conversation. And then when I offered to hire him, he even made a few token refusals. Uh, well, you must have wanted him rather badly, Mr. Sheldon. Uh, as I understand it, you made a rather... Uh donation to our hospital in return for his services? Well, of course I wanted him. Dr. Gates is a very ingratiating young man and very knowledgeable. And he seemed genuinely concerned about Darby's welfare. But he had us all snowed. Come on, Ellie, come on. All right, I'm going to shock her again. Normal sinus rhythm. Beautiful. <laughs> Take these things away, they scare the pants off me. Miss Sheldon, your charges imply that you have been sexually intimate with Dr. Gates. When did this first occur? Uh, that night, on the yacht. Did he force his attentions upon you? No. Aha, uh -huh. then you, uh, you were a willing participant? Now, the use of the word force connotes physical violence. Now, there are many other forms of subtle coercion. Dr. Gates took advantage of Darby as a woman by exploiting her as a patient. And he was very open about it. Go ahead, tell them, Darby. TK, please, I don't want it. Tell them. I asked him if he always took advantage of sick women, and he said, that's why I studied medicine. Is that true, Doctor? <sighs> yes. 
nonsense. Remarks taken out of context can assume all kinds of crazy connotations. Darby, you had a near-fatal attack not too long ago. Wasn't it Dr. Gates that saved your life? Yes. You're damn right it was. And he made it possible to fly some very special equipment into that isolated area. And he helped me perform the most intricate surgery under the most primitive conditions. Now, you call that exploitation. No. I mean, you wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him. Don't you realize that? Yes. Then why the hell are you persecuting him? I, I don't mean to do uh... You two ever talk about being in love? Yes. How did he respond to that? Darby, you don't have to answer that. Dr. Gates? I told Darby that it wouldn't work as long as her father controlled her life. But by accepting her, I'd have to live on his terms, and I didn't want that. So you rejected her, and two days later, you were charged with sexual misconduct. I think that explains the motive behind these charges. Now, just a moment. Shut up, Sheldon. I have the floor. Even if this young lady wins her lawsuit, which is doubtful, she gains nothing. But Dr. Gates loses everything. His reputation, his career, his future. Everything that matters. If we give credence to these charges, every practicing physician will be fair game to predators like Darby Sheldon. You're wrong about Darby, Trevor. She's not a predator. She's a victim. And if anyone has exploited her illness, it's her father. I wish to God she had the guts to do something about it. withdrew all the charges. You're clean? Nothing happened. Congratulations. Now get yourself down to OR. Ellie Kaufman's being prepped for surgery. Oh, what's wrong? Cardiac arrest. But Stanley pulled her through. You should have seen him. He was magnificent. Nice going, Stanley. Go, just go. Go. Stanley. Well, here's to Ellie and her reconstructed heart. May it last forever. And here's to Darby. You know, Trapper, you are pretty rough on her in that hearing. Oh, I thought she was pretty rough on you. <laughs> well, I have learned my lesson. I will never again become emotionally involved with a patient, no matter how beautiful or charming or seductive. Fine. I want to apologize to you about everything. Well, not everything. A lot of it was pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, it was. Well, I just thought you'd like to know that I've broken away from my father completely, and I'm going to try it on my own and see what happens. Well, that's great, Jeremy. I'm glad. Listen, if there's uh, anything I can do, you know, I mean, if you need any help, anything at all. 
Oh, Gans, is the bottle opener down there? <clears throat> uh, I'd better get this back to him. He gets a little cranky when he's thirsty. Gonzo. Thanks, Trevor. That was close. 